Hello and welcome back to the series on Jarkai, or dual wield spinning. Uh, last time we talked about opposing blades, blades moving in different directions, clockwise or counterclockwise, relative. Uh, and I talked about bringing them to different sides of the body, so that you've got a double downward wield, or a double upward wield. And now, this move is not as... not as... Uh, glamorous as a lot of the others. It's a little bit flailing. You might feel like you're swinging your arms around like an orangutan. Um, but uh, again, if you can tighten that up, it's the framework for the other moves. The first of those other moves that I wanted to cover today is probably one of the more popular. You see a lot of people out there doing it, and it's very easy before you know how to do it to uh, really not have any clue how somebody could be doing this move. Uh, if you try it yourself, without, uh, without trying to break it down step by step, and without giving yourself the appropriate amount of time to practice it, you're just going to get frustrated. And the move I'm talking about is the double obiani. If you remember, the obiani was this spin, three beats, one, two, three. Okay, the double obiani is going to be one of those on each side of the body. Like this. And believe it or not, this is one of the easier and more comfortable moves to do once you get it down. It is, however, it's, it definitely has a learning curve to it. There will be a lot of trial and error at this. There will be a lot of mistakes. And when you get it, it will just sort of click in. Um, you'll fight it and fight it and fight it, and then you'll cross that curve, and it'll click in, and your body will know the move. It will remember it. And from then on out, you won't even really have to think about it to get going on. But what this basically is, is if you had that double downward swing that I was doing before, the obiani, or the double obiani, is just a more comfortable version of the same thing. And I'll try to slow it down for you as much as I can here. And uh, the way that I learned how to do this was by reducing it into three beats and timing those three beats off of each other. One hand is going to be one beat behind the other. So while this hand, let's say my right, is coming up from behind my back, my left is starting that second behind the back beat. And this is about as slow as I can make this. So there's coming up behind the back. Here's starting that second behind the back beat. All right, they're staggered by one beat out of the three beats. Uh, and again, try it with exaggerated body movement. Another thing to try when you're uh, learning this is try doing the obiani with one hand, whichever one you want to pay attention to, and having the other just do the double beat. Just sort of following around. I'm dragging my left hand here while I concentrate on my right. Okay, and then shift your concentration to your left. Do the obiani with that and let your right just trail behind. Eventually, when you're used to your left hand doing an obiani while your right hand is moving, and your right hand doing an obiani while your left hand is moving, your body will eventually be able to put the two of them together. Give yourself at least a couple of days of dedicated practice, if not longer, before you get this. And once you get it, practice it for at least a few minutes before you stop. Hit that curve, and then let your body feel the move, feel the, or feel that, uh, or the timing of this move before you stop. Um, so that's the alternating. One more thing I wanted to cover before, or on this video, is the dual version, or the simultaneous version of the same thing. Okay. Simultaneous spins on opposite sides of the direct or opposite sides of the body, opposite directions. If you can practice this sort of wing spin rather, the simultaneous obiani is in a lot of ways easier because your hands are doing the same thing at the same time. You don't have to split your concentration, but it's one beat down, one beat around, and then a beat up. You're going to have to throw your shoulders forward and try to keep the blades 
parallel, or try to keep the blades parallel uh, instead of letting them go out in the front. If you've got one blade behind the other blade and your hands are far enough apart, you can avoid blades clashing. But this move, you run a lot of risk of the blades hitting here or here. Okay, the trick with this one is trying to make that not happen, giving them enough space, jutting one hand in front of the other hand so that the blades can cross. Okay, easier for timing, harder for collision. Uh, but between those two, you've got sort of the fun, or the uh, you've got building on that foundation of the uh, the opposing blades. You've, you're adding in a little bit of complexity. You're adding in a transition, an OB ante. And we'll talk about transitions later. But practice these. Don't get discouraged if you're going for this one. Keep at it. Eventually you will get it. It will snap in and it will feel like the most natural thing ever. Uh, practice those. Next time I'm going to deal with the inverse version of the same thing, which is actually also very difficult. So prepare for a little bit of frustration as you learn this one and that one. Um, so practice those, and I'll see you back here next time. Until then, I'll see you on the forums.